Nope. Nope. Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. ¿Qué es la que hay? Welcome back to Tony West DIY. My name is West. We're gonna continue with the part two of the Borg Warner series. If you haven't seen the first video, you can click on that card. I already mocked up the turbo and the turbo manifold uh, to see, you know, location, fitment and stuff. And I found out that the line that I bought uh, is a little bit too short. That's what she said. So I ordered a new 45 degree fitting. Uh, because right now I had, if, if you see in the past video, I only had a fitting that goes in the block. So with this fitting, I hope that it will be perfect. It's, it's going to push it up a little bit and to, to this side. I also realized that the ABS line is really too close to the turbo and turbo manifold. And if you can see, it's a little brittle and like a little bit melted as well. So I'm gonna see if I can route it in a different location because I found here like a hole here that goes out from underneath the, the fender. I guess I'm just gonna disconnect it from here so I can take the cable out from here and then reroute it on this location. I also ordered new nuts since I realized that I had three different nuts there. I also realized that I ordered the heater line like I showed you guys on the first video because of the location, it's a tight fit. However, I realized that my car is right-hand drive and I thought, you know, that for some reason it, it, the line started there, but if you see, it goes behind the steering column and then you go on the firewall and that's where the AC system go. So now I have to find a way to either reroute the line or, or I don't know, try to utilize the line that I bought from Toublon and modify it in order to make this fit. But if that line doesn't work, then you know that I have a heater line for a left hand drive RX-7 for sale. Like always, we're gonna have a lot of information, so don't go anywhere, uh, let's get started. So this is the Tourblown cast manifold, 347 uh, cast manifold. People asked me in the last video, why did I pick dual wastegates versus uh, just internal wastegate on a turbo? And to be honest, I didn't get this because of this better internal wastegate. By the time I wanted to buy the turbo manifold, this was the only one that was in stock. And I compared it with other brands and this one was cheaper than the others and in addition of this one has EGT bonds and if you want to log back pressure as well i think i believe i pay 950 dollars for this and last time i checked elliot has them in uh sale so i think it's even cheaper now the only downside of this is you, you need you know two wastegates and they're pricey a lot of rx7s are putting good numbers good horsepower number with uh, this manifold. The other turbo manifold, if you wanted to add the EGT bonds, you needed to pay extra on top of, you know, the, the price was even more expensive than this one. Why EGT bonds? EGT stands for exhaust gas temperature. With this, you can get more data every time that you're tuning the car on each specific rotor. Most of the time, they act a little bit different, especially in high horsepower car and that way you can tune them individually English mother do you speak it to make more power but more reliable the turbo manifold came with this but I had to buy the extract extra and I bought a full race gasket <laughs> Yeah. 
So I clean the area and I pass a, a blade just to make sure that everything is flush and clean. I'm going to show you how I'm going to install the studs. This one, I don't know if you see that uh, the thread is kind of like shiny. When I removed the turbo manifold the first time, I realized that that stud, uh, it didn't have thread. I'm assuming the guy had the same issue. He was trying to figure out where the exhaust leak was and they keep tying it that knot and it just messed up the thread so i had to pull the engine up and retap it and then do a helicoil let's keep going about the turbo this is a board warner 9180 efr basically this type of turbo are more efficient and spool really really fast this type of turbo are ceramic ball bearing which is pull faster than the normal journal bearing also the turbine wheel is a gamma tie titanium aluminite i think it's called and it's strong lightweight and it resists a lot of high temperatures this is a b2 housing and it's a twin scroll and this type of engine come with uh, a couple of features they have a speed sensor capabilities also comes with the boost control solenoid i had to buy this plug separately i post the link below and it also comes with a compressor recirculated valve it's like a type of a blow off valve but it doesn't vent to the atmosphere a lot of people wants to hear you know the, the sounds of the turbo they buy the cap that goes here to seal it and then get an external blow of valve. This turbo is also oil and water cool. And the CHRA, they come like steel material or the aluminum, which is more lightweight. I have the comparison. This is a 0.96 AR, which was the one that I had, it's turbonetic. You can see the size comparison. This is a 105. AR. The AR depends on how you want to, um, I guess, utilize the car. If it's more for drag and just quarter mile, people tend to go to 96 for the faster response. But then you will be limited in high RPMs. And if you want more horsepower, then people tend to go to a bigger AR, in my case 105. Bigger the size, bigger the horsepower number but then the more lag you'll see uh, in the mid-range or low end why i went for a 9180 i just found this one on facebook and it was one thousand dollar less of the actual price i really wanted to go with 8374 and 105 ar again this one was a lot cheaper brand new hasn't been used because the guy uh bought it for the honda and he didn't know so when he took it to the mechanic, the mechanic told him that this setup was too big for what he has in, in, in his Honda. These ones come already with this fitting. However, they didn't have the bottom one. And I wanted to show you the comparison. This one was the one that I had on the Turbonetic T60. But if you can see, it was too big. So I ordered this one again. All the parts that I use on all my videos, I always put the link below so you guys can benefit from it but this one have an o-ring already so you don't need silicon to add on the bottom so i have to remove this this fitting and then attach that 
which it will shorten the length of the line. And I had a 10 a.m. around, so I will have to recreate the line, but that's not a big deal. I'm gonna lose this part to clock the compressor housing the way I want it to fit in the engine bay. And yeah, let's install this bad boy. So I'm putting the turbo to see, you know, to mark the turbo. Um, I wanted to know if with the 45 degree fitting that I bought, the line, the oil fit line was able to get to the place that I wanted and it fits perfectly. The bad news though is I was clocking the compressor housing and you know, what I have is front mount intercooler. I'm not sure if this is gonna work because if i measure from here to the highest point which is that bracket there or the strut base i technically have almost four inches three some change uh to in order to to you know to be able to close the hood and to be honest, I'm not sure if I put this here, if it's gonna work. You see there, I'm too high. I'm like almost two inches high from there. And that doesn't go two inches lower. I might have to weld a 90 degree elbow and i really wanted to use the car before the winter but i don't think that's gonna happen so i think i'm gonna use that time as an excuse to do front uh, v mount which i really wanted to do since a long time so let me now that i'm realizing stuff you know i align the chra so the oil feed will be horizontal um that's why i lose these bolts and i kind of clock it to be able to have it like that. And now that I'm here, I'm gonna try and test the downpipe. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was one of the questions on the other video. So let me feed the downpipe there. sure if you guys were able to see it with the GoPro when I was down there uh, it's gonna be hard to try to lift the rest of the pipe but based on kind of what I see I saw it's like a couple inches short so you saw in the other video this is a Marmon flange so it wasn't it it's not gonna match with this one. I had to replace that flange and the bottom flange. I think I have I think I have a 3.5 pipe versus a 3 
this the this one goes 3.5 to 3 so i'm gonna be short i have to replace that flange and the top flange as well so in case you're doing the same installation i mean mine is right hand drive so there's a couple stuff that's gonna be different if your is left hand drive i mentioned you know the heater line and, and stuff like that but the downpipe if you order from tourblown uh, you have certain uh, options but it basically goes to the factory pipe so all the exhaust of this car is aftermarket so i have to adjust to this one so let me take the turbo out start installing the water lines so there will be one will go there and the other one will go down there i really don't like the heater line too close to the turbine housing so I'll, I'll figure it out and then let me install the wastegate and dump tubes all right the wastegate and dump tubes are in just wanted to show you a view from the top part a view from the bottom part i don't have them tight yet but i want to see you know where they're gonna fit especially because this is a right hand drive car so i don't know if it was gonna be different but the steering column is kind of close to the dump tube but there's enough clearance and then i can just angle the dump tube however i want and then this one the rear closer to the subframe but not enough because the engine mounts here so if the engine uh, flex you know it can hit the dump tube but then uh, having enough clearance for the dump pipe man it's looking good all right guys we're almost done i want to show you something that i just received from germany the main engine harness will be able to replace the one that is on the car i want to thank my buddy dustin you can look it up on youtube boost and premix i'm gonna post the link below if this video helped you leave me a like comment or share the video or even better subscribe to the channel and press the bell button so you won't miss any of my videos if you have watched until now i really appreciate you and like always if you have any questions you can hit me on my social media accounts facebook twitter or instagram at tony west diy or send me an email at tony west diy at gmail.com guys stay safe god bless until your next one